in a discussion about our sales funnel um, or how we acquire clients or how clients uh, get started, I uh, wanted to um, go to our website, uh, to the quick links. I wanted to step through some of the forms um, and some of the process maps um, so that a potential client, uh, existing clients, um, and other persons of interest uh, will be aware of the tools and systems that we have available for them to use to step a client uh, through an integrated service delivery, right? So all of the available links are on the website at the quick links. I wanted to point out that our client service cycle starts out with an introduction, a business to business introduction uh, of some kind um, and or initial assessment, right? So they uh, maybe took the 10 core challenge and decided they wanted to go a little further into a 10 core assessment. Um, that introduction could have been by social media. It could have been by another consultant, a contractor. Um, it could have been uh, through an event uh, that we hosted, um, a virtual tailgate, a BOMAC talk, um, a workshop. Uh, in any case, uh, it could be by referral. Um, the introduction could be by RFP. Uh, RFP is request for proposals or request for qualifications or ITP or ITB, uh, invitation to bid. Um, where it's a product um, of some sort. And so this introduction, depending upon whether it's an owner, a manager, or administrator, uh, will come in different forms and um, formats, right? So we have a marketing strategy um, and a sales strategy. And so the core of those strategies is to get that introduction, right? To get that brand visibility, um, so that our target market knows that we have a solution uh, to their pain point, right? And so uh, you hear it talk about the 10 core challenge and the 10 core assessments. Um, that's part of that introduction, um, that effort to be introduced uh, to a target market. And so um, on the client facing side, um, we're building rapport, uh, making introductions, uh, creating assessments um, and, and analysis of uh, what a particular owner, manager, administrator, um, what their problems are, what their pain points are. In-house, um, if you are a business relationship manager um, or in charge of client care, client acquisition, um, and business development, uh, in-house, you will see a process map that looks similar uh, to this, uh, where we have um, our target market leads, um, uh, resources or source uh, to which we are acquiring um, that introduction, um, doing those assessments, uh, creating um, demand for the 10 core challenge, right? And so we have um, goals set there and monitoring exactly if we're meeting those goals and, and those um, uh, uh, metrics that we've set in that area. And so understanding who we are talking to and who our target market is, um, is on the in-house side, right? It's in-house. Um, and then uh, monitoring those conversations and that outreach, the quality of them and um, whether or not we are having the right conversations and connecting with the right solutions uh, to potential pain points, right? And on the uh, service facing side or in-house, um, it complements the client service cycle in that, you know, we're having building this rapport and we're um, 
having these conversations, these relevant conversations about um, operations or about facilities or about um, the projects uh, to be managed. The goal uh, of the conversation is to um, get to a proposal, right? So um, as we talk to a request for a proposal on um, the in-house side, the client-facing side, um, we call it a capability statement. So this is where we submit a proposal to say this is what our capacity is, um, this is these are our solutions, um, and this is how we can solve uh, your problem. In-house, we are composing those proposals in different formats. Um, so for administrators who have uh, set asides um, in terms of their budget um, for particular pain points or particular problems, they've already um, kind of outlined what their problems are, and um, they publicly advertised a request for proposals, and they may have sent it directly to us, or or we have come to know about the RFP uh, through the advertisement. And this may be the same for managers, um, some managers as well. Uh, most business owners, it will be an informal uh, proposal um, based upon uh, the uh, 10 core assessments or the 10 core challenge, um, the proposal might be a lot more relaxed as you get into managers and administrators and larger entities and organizations, the proposals become uh, a lot more in-depth and more complex and more um, targeted to a particular uh, pain point or um, a solution set. You'll see that variation um, based upon um, our target market group. And so that proposal is submitted um, on uh, and recorded uh, on the uh, in-house. And then on the client-facing side, the client understands um, what our service and product solutions are um, and how we can package them and align to the defined needs. Um, and once that's signed, uh, a contract is signed, once that customer or that customer or client is converted um, into contract signing, um, then service delivery begins. And be um, mindful that most contracts require um, a mobility fee, a, a retainer or a deposit of some kind, those conditions will vary depending upon the target market set. For instance, administrator, uh, the way that those contracts are structured, uh, we actually carry a project maybe 30, 60, 90 days um, before we're able to get paid on an invoice. Right, we can invoice at least thirty days, some fifteen to thirty days. Um, but the way that you know government contracts or public agency uh, contracts are um, delivered, um, a service provider or product provider may have to carry uh, that contract um, thirty days, sixty days. Um, versus on the private side, um, you can get a mobilization fee, a retainer fee, a deposit up front to uh, facilitate um, the cost for the project. So each project um, pays for itself. Each contract um, pays for itself. Um, and you don't have to carry um, the expenses um, of that particular contract a long term right um so that's significant to note just in terms of the target market group uh, when we talk about com uh, contract conversion um, the variation between target markets groups um, in mobilizing those contracts 
so that they pay for themselves, right? So on the client facing side service delivery, what does that look like? Presentations, meetings, uh, discussions. Um, uh, we start to dig in a little bit more um, in terms of research and development, um, pl uh, planning, presenting, planning options and solutions in uh, um, charting a path to implementation. Um, we're meeting with the owner, meeting with their staff, uh, with their project teams. Uh, we may meet with stakeholders um, and sometimes maybe meet with some of their clients and customers, depending upon um, what the solutions and the needs were in the initial capability statement um, or the, uh, the proposal itself. A service cycle is at minimum 120 days. We may declare a final service uh, or product delivery then um, that we're at the final phase. Um, and that could be just some form of completion, meaning that if you did a one core assessment, one core service, um, then you want to move into a three core that may be the uh, final product delivery for that one core service um, before we moved into the other two core areas, whatever that may be uh, as defined um, within the contract. Um, In-house, we're also uh, kind of keeping track of those uh, service completions um, uh, compared to conversions um, and the proposals uh, what's in the pipeline in terms of proposals, conversions, and contract completions. So at the end of a uh, contract uh, completion or some form of completion, um, we're still monitoring results, metrics, and data to celebrate some of the success. We still are collecting data as to how the solution is performing afterwards or, or um, after implementation. And as indicated before, uh, we're still building that rapport. The 10 core assessments give us a asset life cycle uh, management outlook. And so we're able to present uh, to owners, managers, administrators, additional extended um, services and products. At the end of a, a client service cycle, um, we have delivered uh, value uh, to that client, uh, their staff, um, or their client base. And that value can take the form of increased uh, employee retention, decreased cost, uh, higher productivity, more clients, uh, new market share, increased revenue, uh, positive uh, publicity uh, or improved company culture, um, increased employee engagement or decreased turnover. Um, it could be saved time, uh, saved money, um, higher customer satisfaction and retention, uh, faster outputs, uh, improved uh, leadership, process improvement, increased production, better team cohesiveness, better project team efficiency. As indicated, the minimum service cycle uh, is 120 days. And if we um, ballpark uh, fee structure to complement that 120 day uh, cycle, service cycle, um, we have uh, a fee structure at 10000 that's with the owner, business owner, that's making maybe $100,000 in revenue. And that would be 50000 for a business owner with a revenue of 500000 And then when we get into school districts where the budgets are $500 million, <laughs> That um, 120 day um, is 10 percent of that, depending upon again the contract, the capability statement, um, and the terms of the contract. Um, that 120 day 
service cycle and its fee structure will vary based upon target market set. Sales facing side. Um, as service contract is completed, that's recorded. And then we also, we have a customer survey and a follow-up procedure so that we're still building that rapport. And we have some uh, customer uh, relationship, client relationship, uh, management styles uh, that uh, continue to build a rapport and um, uh, put us in position for return of new service as our clients and customers grow into new services. Um, they are reaching out to us again um, to provide um, that service.